Okay, so let's talk activated carbon and activated carbon filters and 3D printing and also self-sourcing the carbon. First of all, why do you need a filter in your 3D printer? Well, because every filament that you're using is creating two things while printing. One thing is some chemicals, which is vapors basically, and another thing is microparticles. And a lot of people may say, oh, but a lot of filaments are biodegradable. Well, a lot of stuff is biodegradable like wood but you don't put in your lungs so the best way to protect yourself from harm is to fully enclose your printer and have some recirculating uh, filter which just pushes air over and over so filtering material and this is basically what most of the carbon filter do and the most fav famous DIY brand is of course nevermore you know this pretty design filters that you put under your bed that you clip together as magnets and they work as as promised actually yeah they really do filter the air nice nevermore design is free assuming that you have an abs capable printer that can print the casing um, but they also do offer uh, to buy a nevermore uh, carbon pellets from them and they advertise that this will be the good carbon uh, compared to self-sourced carbon which can sometimes be bad because it has been acid washed uh, and acid washed carbon will basically make your overpriced warrant 2.4 rust from inside out in minutes so i wanted to check whether i can just go to the building stuff store buy some uh, activated carbon which usually uh, is sold in the plumbing department and uh, well test whether it is acid washed and i did exactly that i bought three types of carbon like this this and this this is by the way six euros per kilo yes they're a bit smaller than the ones used in nevermore but uh, they should work still um, as far as they can push air through them uh, and uh, these all are actually coconut uh, coal coconut activated coal or something like that uh, let's test all three of them my testing setup will be overwhelmingly simple i will have this top over box i will have this uh, heater and fan combo uh, a little bit on this later uh, this is 12 volts it consumes around 4 amps and it just recirculates the air and heats it up i printed a box so, uh, from abs which will clip onto the fan so I'm pulling the uh, carbon here, so making sure that the air will go through the color carbon, the hot air will go through the carbon all the time. And I'm also having some parts which can actually rust. So basically these are screws, parts of uh, linear rods and so on and so forth. But one important message regarding these things, this is a literal fire hazard. I got five of these for a client project. Uh, we tested them three went in flames there are some protection well some things that should work as a protection mechanism but they don't <laughs> so we tried to test them in close environments three of them went in flames and uh, if you are going to repeat the test with something like this like 20 bucks heater from aliexpress do not ever leave this unattended because it will burn your hands on Okay, so this is the testing setup as I managed to fit this together. As you see, this is like a perfectly working 3D printer, a fan, a heating element, a lot of screws just lying around. So let's take one type of carbon. Let's pour this carbon inside. I believe we will pour half of the carbon. No, I will not. I need to find a funnel. Take two with the funnel. Ah, that's messy. Okay, let's call it good enough. Uh, let's uh, close the lid. Where is the lid, by the way? Let's close the lid and let's give it like four or five hours of continuous operation to see if the first carbon activated carbon sample really arrests something here. Okay, so let's see what we got there after approximately six hours or so. Uh, the temperature on the surface was up to 50 or 60 degrees. So I believe this is enough to test whether this is uh, carbon is really bad for your screws and you know what I expected something much 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 worse but as you may see the screws the rods 
Everything is basically intact. No rust here. Which is really unexpected. I did expect this to be terrible. But no, there is no big change with the screws. Maybe this one is rusty a bit. No, it just it's just dirty. It's just dirty, so it didn't it didn't rust. So at least one type of the activated charcoal I'm using is suitable for your 3D printer. Let's try two other ones. Okay, so for the second test I'll be using this bottle. This has even smaller particles here, but never mind. Uh, the flow is actually good, so the, uh, the fan is still pushing through. Let's get the screws back inside. And let's close it for another six hours or so. Okay, here we go with the second box of coal and screws. And... Whoa! <laughs> so this is what an acidic carbon looks like. So the second box, it basically rusted off these small screws. Uh, huh. It's actually very interesting that the black and steel rusted the most and uh, stainless, stainless did not so much but you can see the stainless, stainless nuts here where is it? so the stainless nuts are also rusty so at least one brand of uh, coal really works and the second brand causes some major oxidation so what Nevermore says is true, you should check your carbon. I was, I had no great hopes for this carbon anyway, because as you can see it's pretty like small, like powderish. And uh, well, that will be very hard to maintain because it will just pour out of all, all the holes. Simple saying. And I have the last sample, which is from that big bottle. One kilo bottle with the uh, largest size of the pellets and let's clean this up and let's give it a try the final try because I have the biggest hopes for the carbon it has the biggest pellets and it's the cheapest one this is definitely acid washed I don't think I'm in a mode of giving a good cleanup to that I think I will just throw them as they are and see if they rusted more than it was before. So basically, yeah, this is a picture before and hopefully tomorrow there will be a picture after. But for you it will be like... Okay, so the final part of our adventure. As I see here, there is no more rust than it was before. Because the screws, at least the stainless steel screws, are still okay. The rod is still with us. Um, no new rust on the screws. And no new rust on the stainless steel screws also. So basically I had only one rusty nut, which is this one. And uh, the other two nuts didn't get any additional rust to them. Oh, this one did. This one didn't. So this is mildly, mildly acidic, something like that. I cannot think of different name. The, there is something to that. Maybe it is just uh, wet, so it produces some water, and then the water makes the screw, uh, the screws rusty. Maybe this is the case. But anyway, out of three samples of the carbon of the activated carbon only one is actually usable so what did we find out out of three samples i mean this this and this only one sample was not acidic this one no the first one was not acidic this one is good this one is acidic and this one is acidic all the samples also produced some kind of water vapor or something like that because I've seen some condensation so I would say this would be uh, wise to dry these coal, uh, this charcoal pellets. So what is the takeaway? Out of three samples, I mean this and uh, this, only the first one was not acidic 
and can be used inside your printer. Two others are either acidic or they have some moisture inside which uh, goes out when the color is heated and uh, well basically rusts everything. So can you self-source the carbon? Absolutely yes. Can it be acid washed? As I say one or two of three are acid washed and uh, can you test whether it is really acidic? Yes, it requires a simple Tupperware container, some heater and a fan and a couple hours of time. And of course the final question, should you really have an activated carbon filter in your printer? Absolutely yes. Stay safe guys, until the next video.